This is the flight deck, a jump off point for Burn Peak's mountain bike trails. If memory serves me correct, it cost about $600 to build back in 2019. This same structure today would breach the $2,000 mark, and that doesn't bode well for Burn Peak. Wooden features are kind of what we do. Sure, we do have the Alaskan mill for processing our own timber, but it's not like slicing bread. Using an Alaskan mill to plank hardwoods like oak consumes time, bar oil, and chain wear. It's great if you need a specific dimension or a few pieces, but that's not what we have our sights on. Berm Peak is home to many standing dead hardwoods. Some are even naturally decay resistant, which means the whole tree is still filled with strong and usable wood. If we only had a way to get big chunks of this timber off the mountain, we could take it to the sawmill down the road. So what I want to do is make a rig that attaches to the receiver of the gator. It's going to go up, and then that's where our winch is going to be. It's going to attach to the skidding tongs. We can lower it onto a log, lift the log up, and then we can use the gator to get it all the way from the woods to our trailer. Where are we taking it? We're going to take it to the sawmill. I've been planning to build this skidding rig for a while, but never had the sense of urgency until now. If we can bring this plan to fruition, any timber we have access to could be processed in bulk. I don't think any welding took place here. Ugh. Oh man. Learning is expensive. You either have to pay somebody to teach you, like in school, you have to use your time in an apprenticeship, or you have to keep making mistakes by yourself. If you're afraid to try, you're never gonna learn. That looks like a little bit almost like welding. I think it's that jacket. Now it's tacked up. In addition to dead standing trees, we have quite a few just lying around. We can use the winch on the gator to pull them out in the open, then see if our log trailer actually works. Get the dolly underneath. Oh, look at that! Yeah. these logs on wheels, we can tow them out instead of skidding them across the driveway. I don't want to piss off my wife too badly. We're still renting the excavator and we can use that to load the timber into the trailer. You may wonder why we don't just use the machine to grab the timbers and walk them out of the woods. The answer is that it would be prohibitively slow and cumbersome, given the distance we need to travel. Our contraption is making it real easy to get these to the trailer, but we still haven't truly put it through its paces. Dude, it's crazy is how long this one is. I think we gotta tow it past this dendron. Just grab a, the, old, uh, the old Frenchie. Get out of here, Frenchie boy. Oh. Ooh. Come here. What is it doing to our thing? It's really got it cocked like. Because we don't want to do this to it. Just we should never be towing it with this. Because, yo, that bent the gator. It bent the receiver on the gator. Holy From here, you can really see that you like. You can totally see. Oh, God, I hate that. For some reason, it never occurred to me that the gator's receiver would be the weak point. I just assumed that pulling too hard would break the skidding rig or cause the gator to pop a wheelie. Not so. 
The Gator's rated for 130 pounds of tongue weight, which I'm more than happy to exceed by a bit. But what we created is straight up foolish. When you pull straight out on this thing, it's like a purpose-built leverage bar that puts insane stress on the receiver. That was dumb, but I think we can redeem ourselves and bend it back. We bent the receiver back with the excavator and used the ratchet strap to transfer the load to the tie-down points in the bed. We'll redesign this rig someday, but for now, we're back in business. Back up. Just missed the whale tail, I think. The timbers we cut from branches will serve us better as support posts. As for the straightest sections of trunk, the trailer is now packed with them. This load is a test to see if loading timbers and taking them down the road is more efficient than using the Alaskan mill on site. And we're about to find out if all this work was worth it. Back about right there, that's good right there. See that saw bit sits against yeah. that shoulder? And that tool I showed you is you stick it through there and you pull it out. One of the reasons I love bicycles is you can plainly see how they work. All the gears, cranks, and cables are right out in the open. The same is true for this mill. There are no microchips, LCD screens, or safety sensors. If something breaks, you don't need to wait for someone from the manufacturer to come reprogram it. It's not the latest in sawmill technology, but it's tough and it's right down the road from Burn Peak. They're hammered to run at a certain RPM. In other words, if you back out there and sight that saw, it's not perfectly flat. Yeah. It's in a dish. When it comes up to speed, it stands up straight. It's got tension in it. And that's when you can drive it straight down the log. Oh. If it gets warm, it takes the tension out of it a little more and it becomes wobbly. So it's important that the saw blade doesn't really hit the log, it's, it's sliding through the cut. Rollers, chains, pulleys, gears, and conveyor belts all work together to serve the blade, and it eats. Audi controls it all from a little control booth. He examines each log, rotates it into position, and locks it down. With the pull of a lever, a plank is born. Through years of experience, Audi knows how to get the most planks out of each timber. But waste wood gets used for shims, mulch, firewood, or sawdust mountain. The sawmill, I mean, it just looks like a little old mountain sawmill, but it's afforded us a good living. And I put my daughter through college and we built houses and made a living. And the gift to it all is working for yourself and doing kind of what you think you can do for yourself. And it's been, a, it's been a gift and a blessing. I can't complain about it. With our freshly minted planks loaded up, it's clear that this is the way to go. There's about 500 and say 525 board feet of it, 210 bucks. If we're processing more than one timber, it's absolutely worth it for us to drag these to the trailer and head down the road. This will get us through a good part of the summer, and the best part is we still have, again, as much standing white oak and some back there that we haven't even touched. 
Although very imperfect, we did get to practice a new workflow, familiarize ourselves with some new tools, and make a new business relationship. And with the lumber stockpile looking healthier than ever, I'm seeing big wooden features in our future. If you want to see us build those features, make sure you subscribe to Berm Peak. Thanks for watching, thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, I still gotta return this lattice to Lowe's. That's still good, right? Gator for sale, lightly used, uh, just around the property.